Hey everyone, here we are for CC Cycle 2 and Week 17. This is going to be memory work ideas for class and at home and including a review game idea as well. So this week we are continuing with our area formulas. We are moving on to the area of a square. And so we sing this to the tune of 99 bottles. And last week we started with the rectangle. So this week is the area of a square equals the length of its side squared. And so what I do like to do this week is just explain, especially for the littles, what does it mean when we say squared, right? And so basically that just means that it's the sides are all equal. So that just means one side multiplied by itself, right? Um, that's what a square is, any number multiplied by itself. So since the sides are equal on a square, it's the same thing. It's the same number multiplied twice. So the area of a square equals the length of its side squared. We sing that to that tune. Another fun idea though that I'm going to be doing with the littles is to actually make a square out of just some masking tape and put this shape of a square onto the floor and then have all the kids jump into the square representing the area of the square and then I will point to the sides as we sing it. So as we sing the tune, we're also kind of adding some motion to it, having the kids jump into it, that's the area and then sing it to the tune all together. Or you could even make it into a dance party uh, in the square as you're singing the tune. So a couple fun ideas for math. Next week, we're moving on to the area of a triangle, which will be sang to the same tune. And we could do the same thing with our masking tape. But just another fun idea that I thought of this week. OK, for English, we are moving on to a noun. And so we sing this to the tune of I'm a little teapot. And it sounds like this. A noun names a person, place, thing, activity, or idea. A noun names a person, place, thing, activity, or idea. So uh, as we sing that, you can drop on the board a couple examples of those things. A person, a place, a thing, an activity, and an idea. You could just put like a light bulb with like, you know, like it's on. So like having things coming out of it so it shows that it's an idea right and that is english for history we are learning about world war ii leaders and so for this the song talks about the axis leaders and then it talks about the allied leaders and it mentions all their names so a couple different options here to keep it simple as you listen to the song and sing it together as a class you could have one half of the class make x's uh, representing that they are the axis leaders and then the other class, half of the class um, hold hands and lift their hands up like they're all in support of each other and they are the allied leaders. So that's one way to do it, just to lift hands as you sing it. Uh, in years past, I've also had these that we've written out, basically all the names of the leaders that are part of the axis and then all the names of the allied, just all written out like we have and kind of some of our other history ones. And so we could use these. Uh, one idea that I have thought I might do is to put like little stretchy headbands, or if you have some kind of headband that you could have each of the students put this in their headband to hold it up as they are representing being an axis leader or an allied leader where they're lifting their hands up together like they're shaking each other's hands. Um, two different options for the students to go through the World War II leaders with the song. Of course, always with history, we always have it written on the board and we start by reading it and having the students repeat after me. And then we introduce the song and sing it together. These are just some fun activities to do as you introduce it. Okay, so that is history. For Latin, we are moving on to our first conjugation endings, future tense. And the first sound of the future tense for these is bo, B-O. And so what we do in class for this part of Latin is I bring in an actual bow. And what we'll do is we'll just have the kids stand in line in front of the class. And the first one will start with the bow and they will pass it down to the end of the line. So by in the future, it'll be at the end of the line. The person at the end of the line will hold the bow up as we sing the tune that Cece provides for our first conjugation endings in future tense. So the idea is just representing that in the future, the bow is gonna be somewhere different. So it starts out here, but in the future, it ends up here. 
and um, the last person in line will get to kind of hold it up. I think that I might make that me just because I know I'm a girl uh, and I'll, I'll enjoy doing that. But you can kind of fill that out with your class or you could just pass the bow around as a visual for saying bow. You could even use like a bow and arrow if you feel like that's more appropriate for a visual. But that is how we will cover first conjugation, future tense endings. Sing the tune that CC provides and remember the bow for a visual aid. All right, for timeline, we have Napoleon. So we make an N, Napoleon, crowned, but like a, doing a crown on our head, crowned emperor. Anytime we say emperor or royalty, we make an E and we move it down like a sash representing royalty. So Napoleon, crowned emperor of France. Take an F and slide it around like that. The next one is liberation of South America. So we're going to make S's with our fists. And we're going to make the sign for liberation. So we were bound and now we're free, right? So liberation of South America. You just take your thumb from the front to the side representing an A. So this is S-A, South America. Then we have the War of 1812. So for that, we're going to do the sign for war. And 1812, that battle was won with lots of explosions and bombings. So we do this for 1812, just representing bombs. So the War of 1812. Then we have the Missouri Compromise. So we're going to do the sign for coming into agreement. So we'll touch our foreheads like we're thinking, and then we'll bring our hands together like this. This is the Missouri Compromise. Then we have immigrants flock to America. So we're going to do the sign for flocking to America. This is the sign for America. All right, next we have the Monroe Doctrine, and that was all about the expansion of the U.S., and so what we're going to do is bring our hands together and then pull them apart. So the Mon Monroe Doctrine, we're going to do the sign for expansion, and then we have Romantic Period of the Arts. That was a time known for lots of emotion in the expression, and so we're going to go like we have a sad face down, and then as we come up, turn into a smile. So, and that is the romantic period of the arts. That is all of our timeline. For geography, we are doing the Central European countries. And we are going to sing this to the tune of, if you're happy and you know it, we're going to include both weeks, 17 and 18, since they're both about Central European countries. So we have Central European countries this week for week 17, and then more Central European countries countries for week 18. And the tune sounds like this. If you find yourself in Central Europe, you might be in Germany, Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, Switzerland. This is Central Europe. For next week, it'll continue the tune. If you find yourself in Central Europe, you might be in Italy, Austria, Hungary, Czechia, Slovakia. This is Central Europe. And I got that tune on CC Connected. I will have to link that into here uh, when I can look up the name of it. And I'll add the link to the description in this video. But that's how we will cover our uh, Central European countries to include both weeks. All right. For science, we have Newton's second law of motion. I did not sing the tune last week. Um, I had some people asking what the tune was. We sing this to the tune of the Beverly Hillbillies theme song. And this is from Robin Young on YouTube. And it includes all of our three weeks of science from 16, 17, and 18. So this week we are on the second law of motion. And it sounds like this. Newton's second law of motion states that force equals mass times acceleration. F equals MA. Newton's second law of motion. And that's the same tune that we'll use for next week when we do the third law of motion. And that is how we will cover all of our memory work. For a review this week, we're probably going to do some playing with some Play-Doh. And we'll just have the kids constructing whatever kind of things they want to build as we review as much of the memory work as possible. And just kind of make it a free time. They'll each get their own Play-Doh so there's no quarreling about which color and who has more just give them each an amount of Play-Doh and just let them have fun and be creative while we review as a, as a group. So that's what we'll do for a review this week. And for some at-home ideas this week, 
we are learning about Central Europe and geography, so there's lots of fun ideas in terms of things that you could eat and bring geography home. Uh, salted pretzels is a German snack that you could eat. Uh, put some butter or some mustard on there, or dip it in some beer cheese, that would be yummy. Also, wiener schnitzel, that is the pan-seared or pan-prepared veal, veal meat. Lots of different ways you could prepare it. You could prepare that, but you can look that up. And then for something sweet, you could do something like meringue cookies or meringue treats. Those are popular in Switzerland. And so you could do some Swiss meringues or even some chicken cordon bleu, which is common. Um, cordon bleu in general is common, but it's like meat that you prepare with, you wrap it around in the middle, you put some ham or bacon, and then usually like a gruyere or cheese and cook that all together. Super, super yummy. So a couple fun ideas for things that you could eat. Of course, bratwurst. Think about brats for Germany. We love to go to a place called Leavenworth. It's up here in the Northwest. And whenever I think of brats, it always takes me back to that Bavarian town and, and, and Germany. So uh, lots of fun ideas for eating our geography this week. All right, for our devotion, Indescribable, we are going to be on week 17. We're learning about energy change and things like that. So page 112 in that devotional is correlating to what we're learning in our science. And then, of, of course, Old World Echoes. You have great read-alouds there every week, so you want to check that out. And my audio mic has died. So from this point on, I am going to be doing a voiceover. So... Magic School Bus has a great one for this week. It is about gravity. It's season four, episode eight. That's called Gains Weight on the Magic School Bus. And then since we're studying World War II this week, a great movie that you might want to watch as a family could be The Sound of Music. That's a great movie and has to do with World War II and it might be a fun one to check out this week. I will post some library read-alouds for this week down in the description of this video and anything else that I can think of. If you have any questions, as usual, let me know. Otherwise, have a great week 17, and I'll see you next week for week 18. Bye.